This is one of the stories from my book, Dear Frickin' Fear, which is a grouping of small stories and meditations. And uh, I wanted to read this one to you. It's called The Pig Prince. Though it was just another day in the pig fields, today the stench seemed abnormally strong. Maybe it was due to the intense heat, or maybe it was because of the dreams I had last night. I had visions of the palace, my home in the past. I saw my parents' faces so clearly. I heard their voices calling me and remembered what their love felt like living with them in the large castle. I couldn't tell if the tears in my eyes were from homesickness or the smell of pig poop. As I shoveled dung into heaps inside the large pen where I was assigned, I recalled the day the news came to me. I was in the market shopping for a special gift to give my sister for her crowning. She had reached that special age of 13 and would now be considered a princess. Even though I was crowned a prince four years earlier, it sometimes seemed like yesterday. Now my sister's turn had come and I wanted to make it perfect for her. I was in her favorite store when it happened. One of the members of the royal court rushed in with fear in his eyes. Prince, you must come with me at once, he said insistently, grabbing me by the arm and pulling me into the back room of the store. Within seconds, three men in full-length robes with their faces hooded stormed in, knocking aside shoppers and sending merchandise tumbling onto the floor. They searched around, and when they didn't find who or what they were looking for, they abruptly left. I asked the courtier what was happening, and he replied, The kingdom has been overthrown, prince. The royal family has been slain, and the castle was overtaken by another kingdom. He was trembling in fear and begged me to come with him to a farm miles away from the city so that I would be safe. I stood there in shock. I didn't know what else to do but panic and follow him. Upon arriving at the farm, I broke down, mourning the loss of my entire family. That was almost two years ago. I'd heard rumors through the farm owner that the invaders had given up their aggressive search for other members of the royal family. But occasionally we would hear reports of the new army commissioning small quest missions when a possible sighting of a royal family member had made known. The chance that they would come this far into the countryside was unlikely, so I live my days with relatively little anxiety on the pig farm. I was snatched from my daydream by a commotion at the front gate of the farm. All the workers stopped to see what was going on. There were palace guards. They grabbed the owner of the pig farm and brought him before the captain. Even from where I stood, I could see the poor man trembling. Would he rescue me again and convince them that I was not here? Just as that thought passed through my mind, the captain roughly shook the farmer who quickly pointed in my direction. Well, I guess that answered my question. I turned away slowly, acting as though I hadn't seen them, and began walking toward the barn, carrying some hay. The guards moved swiftly. As soon as I reached the barn and was out of their line of sight, I sprinted as fast as I could out the back door and spied an escape route through the tall corn. I dove into the thick stalks and waited a moment. Hearing nothing, I decided the escape was a success. Staying low to the ground slowed my progress, but eventually I reached the other end of the cornfield. As I crept out, I saw the tree line of the forest. Glancing over my shoulder to make sure the coast was clear, I sprinted into the darkening woods. The sun was setting. Without moonlight, it was difficult to maneuver through the woods after sunset. 
I had to feel my way from tree to tree while taking care not to make noise by stepping on old branches or crunchy leaves. My journey was a slow one. In the distance were some bright lights. Were they fires or were they torches? They seemed stationary, so I decided it must be some sort of camp. I moved in an outward direction to avoid them and then began my progress towards the forest border. Perhaps I could escape altogether and start a new life somewhere else where no one knew me at all. What was that? I thought I heard a crumpling sound behind me. Or wait, was that beside me? It was hard to tell because the sounds seemed to echo all over the place. I crouched down and began moving forward again, but I ran into a large tree. When I raised my hands to regain my balance, they met with chain mail. It wasn't a tree. Hands quickly grabbed my wrists as I panicked and struggled to get free. Then there was light and I was surrounded by torches. Don't struggle, Prince. We're here to help you, urged one of the guards. I couldn't recognize anyone. My heart was pounding and I was searching with terror for a potential means of escape. I dragged my feet and struggled as they pulled me toward the campfires. We arrived in the clearing and near the campsite was a substantial group of soldiers standing guard around a large carriage. I was escorted to the transport as silence fell among the men. The door of the carriage flew open and a young lady in a beautiful cloak sprang from the door into my arms. Brother, she cried. It was my sister. I was taken by complete surprise and hugged her back so tightly I thought I would never let her go. After several minutes and mutual tears, she whispered into my ear, I've missed you so much, brother. I love you so much. And you stink like a pig. (laughs) We both burst into laughter, and the rest of the guard detail joined in with us. I looked around, and now that I was calm, I recognized several of the faces of my family's royal guard with whom I'd grown up in the palace with. My sister grabbed my hands and looked me in the eyes with great longing. Brother, would you please come back to us? I don't know why you ran away but we all love you so much and want you to be home. My smile faded away into befuddlement. I was confused, and my voice reflected it as I tried to speak. The intruders, the kingdom, it's fallen. Are you saying everyone is still alive? Now my sister's face appeared confused. She seemed like she had no idea what I was talking about. Brother, you left the palace to go shopping and never returned. We've been searching for you all this time. What intruders are you talking about? Anger began to well up inside me, but I still wasn't sure why. My heart had figured it out already, and my mind was having to catch up. They had lied to me. I had been deceived. I looked at my sister, and after taking a deep breath, I told her what had happened. The captain of the guard listened to the whole story and knew what had to be done. He dispatched men to arrest the farmer and his three brothers and deliver them to the palace. My sister and I moved to the carriage. I helped her inside and told her that until I was able to bathe, I probably should just ride up top with the driver. She grabbed me and pulled me up into the carriage with her, rolling her eyes. I haven't seen you in two years, and there's no way you're sitting anywhere but right next to me the whole way home. She sat beside me and held my arm in a grip. She eventually fell asleep with her head on my shoulder. I was so filled with emotion I couldn't even close my eyes. Thoughts of my parents and my other 
brothers and sisters crowded my head as tears rolled uncontrollably down my face. They were a mixture of sorrow for our lost years and extreme joy that I would soon be reunited with my family. As the transport pulled into the castle road, I saw crowds lined along the sides. One of the guards had ridden ahead at full speed to bring the news of my return. The carriage hadn't yet reached a full stop before the door opened and my parents pulled me into their arms. They didn't care that I was clothed like a pauper and smelled a bit like animal dung. My brothers and sisters joined our embrace, and I knew I was truly safe in the arms of love. This is a story of all of our lives. Coming from a kingdom of unconditional love, we've all been deceived and lured into a world of fear governed by the laws of conditional love. We've been convinced that we're less than we really are and are persuaded to shovel loads of pig crap. (laughs) Our confidence has been broken because of those lies, and we've unwittingly submitted to be slaves to the world rather than living as our royal selves. Our journey is to remember who we really are, powerful, eternal, supernatural spirit beings made from unconditional love, the sons and daughters of the Creator, who are the mother and father of all things. It's time to remember. You are loved. <laughs>